We recently took a trip to Australia and attended an event featuring many old and almost forgotten trades. Some of these are common to the United States and some are not. The event was the Lost Trades Fair held at the Racecourse in Bendigo, Australia. We happened to catch this event on one of the hottest days of the year where it was hovering around 100 degrees that afternoon. But these people were not going to let a little heat keep them from sharing their trades to everyone who attended. As we rounded the corner of the entrance, the first thing that caught my eye was this beautiful car. It appeared to be a fully restored Rolls Royce race car from many decades ago. And at a closer inspection, I realized the car was actually displaying metalwork by one of the talented exhibitors. He bent and curved almost all of this bodywork in his workshop to make this car look pristine. And then my eyes started to open to the realization that the show might be better than I expected. As we moved forward, it felt like there was a sense of pride and humbleness in the air to show off these fading trades with the hope to teach the next generation before it was too late. We soon walked up to a gentleman who was spinning some wool on his homemade spinning wheel. I could easily see it was not your standard wooden version, but rather made out of metal. And as we talked, I learned that his father actually built this one for him many decades before because the dad wanted his son off his own spinning wheel. That's pretty cute. Many of the crafts involved using local canes, seed pods, and other elements you could find growing in Australia. You could easily tell these people try to be wise with the natural elements all around them and not take for granted what they have. They also love working with the other renewable resources from animals, such as wool, honey, and leather. As we continued around, there were a number of leather crafters, including some who made clothing, purses, hats, aprons, and even boots. There was a cobbler who was giving a demonstration on how to build boots to last a lot longer than the modern boots of today. You could easily feel how much he loved this craft and happily answered as many questions as you could ask. Feeling inspired, I later purchased a leather hat from an Australian company just to help the cause. As we walked further, I discovered the blacksmiths in the metal casting tents, both of which were demonstrating their craft to anyone who was interested. I have never tried either one of these, so both of them were appealing. And right next door were the knife and spear makers. For those of you who build in this fashion, it is very impressive. And the next stop was the woodworking tent, which has to be one of the oldest trades around. There were demonstrations in barrel making, spoon carving, furniture building, wooden instruments, and much, much more. And for those of you who like turning, they had a gentleman who was continuously making products on his lathe and showing everyone how. With the speed and accuracy in which he turned his items, you could tell he had been doing this for a while. And of course, he had a great Australian accent. We are doweling it. It's going to force the glue into it. If you put glue around your spigot, it's going to all ooze out the wrong way on you. One of the biggest surprises happened when we reached a local lumber company who was selling some of their wood at the rear of the event. I was absolutely shocked at the prices for some of this high quality wood. The lumber was flattened and kiln dried for a very low cost. There were large slabs of black wood just stacked in piles ready to be purchased. This wood is very closely related to the koa wood you can find in Hawaii and it could look absolutely beautiful. Now the pricing might not look that low until you realize that the Australian dollar is only worth about two thirds of a US dollar. So therefore, a lot of these slabs are very well priced. Another learning lesson while I was visiting this event actually happened when I was talking to the wagon builders. I was completely unaware there are several people still working full time in this industry. That was until I was reminded by one of the presenters of the Amish living here in the States. They continue to build and repair thousands of wagons for the communities on a regular basis. Isn't it funny sometimes how you have to leave your nation or maybe just your state to find out there's things existing just right up the road? Also while at the event, we came across a number of people playing music on instruments that they had actually built. Plus an unusual street band that you might find amusing. One of the hardest parts about attending an event like this is wanting to learn one of these trades that has taken somebody a lifetime to learn. But we don't want these trades to disappear either. So if you're interested in a trade, just do a search online for your area. There's a good chance a class may be available within a short driving distance. Now, of course, you don't have to travel all the way to Australia to attend an event like this. Just Google Maker Fair and you'll be surprised what might come up. 
Several of these events happen in the U.S. and around the world. Some are larger than others, but you can definitely support the ones in your area. Now, I can't leave without telling you a little bit about Australia and giving you a quick review of some of their unusual animals and customs. First off, and probably the most well-known, is the Great Barrier Reef. It has some of the most beautiful coral and fish in the ocean. And if you ever get a chance to snorkel or scuba dive this beautiful creation, I would highly recommend it. Next up is the kangaroos. I was informed that there are many different species of kangaroos spread out across the continent of Australia. There are some larger versions, but the most common variety I saw were about the size of a small to mid-sized dog. They also have a tendency to run out in front of cars, so it's very common to see a lot of roadkill. In fact, I had a very close call and had to come to a sliding stop to avoid a herd of them actually running out in front of my car. Next up are the penguins. Did you know that the south side of Australia is actually home to the world's smallest penguins? That was definitely a surprise to me. These small penguins actually burrow holes in the ground and return every night after feeding during the day. Some of them can even travel up to two kilometers from the beach to find their nest. And of course, I have to tell you about the Tasmanian devils. These small to medium sized animals only live to about four years old. They got their name due to the growls they make and how their ears can turn red when they get agitated. And just in case you are wondering, they do not spin around in circles like the cartoons. But they can get caught in what the keepers like to call a loop, which is continuously circling their homes. This can be prevented if their environment gets changed often. Moving beyond the animals, one of the biggest surprises in Australia was the lack of trash cans in public. But yet, everything was still just so clean. That's because they are a very recycling-minded community and expect you to take your rubbish back home with you and deal with it there. Australians also love to shorten words. For example, the Salvation Army is called Salvos. And if they were to write down the word address, they shorten it to Addy, A-D-D-Y. And they don't call them Tasmanian Devils, they call them the Tassie Devils. Looking at their food, they do have a variety of differences, including Vegemite, which no, I didn't try, but uh, I was told some people like it and some people think it's disgusting, so I stayed away from it. They also are very health conscious, so you do see snack foods, but you also see a lot of variety of healthy foods as well. One of the surprises for me was when I was asked if I wanted bacon with my food, I said yes, and they came out with a slab of ham, about the thickness if you'd see maybe like a slice of a honey baked ham, like real thick ham, and they called it bacon. Go figure. On another note, you don't see police very often, but you see plenty of signs letting you know they are around. Makes me kind of think of Big Brother in that old 1984 book. A little strange. And the officers I did see were decked out in full tactical gear and had some very large guns, so I don't recommend messing with them. They also had a few other amusing signs that you might get a laugh out of. In total, we visited Cairns, Sydney, Melbourne, and Hobart, which gave us a nice sense of the country, and I would highly recommend visiting if you ever get the chance. And just in case you are wondering, we did not see any wild spiders or snakes the entire trip. And even though we were warned by family and friends to watch out for all the dangerous animals that live there, we realized all these people that currently live there, most of them walk around in bare feet and sometimes in sandals. So if they're doing that and they're not getting injured on a regular basis, it must not be such a dangerous area after all. Now, if you'd like to see a little bit more about our trip to Australia, I'm going to put a link to our second channel in the description because we have a couple videos over there. Now, I hope this video inspired you to rediscover some of these lost trades so they don't get lost forever. Have fun building.